Hi guys, and thank you again for joining us here at Joyce Knows Who Done It, where we look at murders, suicides, natural deaths of the famous and the infamous. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching and subscribing. I just love doing these. I love mysteries. Now, this video is not going to have as many pictures because we were putting pictures in and trying to make it a whole experience, and we got dinged for that. So that can't happen, but the story is still good. Now, this story is about a young lady that I absolutely just loved her. I really did. I loved her music. Her personality when she was good was good great. Um, in fact, when this woman passed, I really felt that. And I remember watching her funeral, which was live on CNN. And man, did I shed tears. I really cried as if I knew her. She was in our lives since the 80s. And I'm talking about Whitney Elizabeth Houston. I loved Whitney Houston. But incorporated in this is also going to be Bobby Brown or Bobby Christina Brown. Let me put it like that. Not Bobby Brown, her ex-husband, but Bobby Christina uh, Brown, because she and her mother have this kind of synchronicity that you can't talk about one unless you talk about the other. So I'm going to start with uh, Whitney Houston, and she was born uh, August 9th, 1963. And that number eight says that in her earlier part of her life, once she got going, she had a lot of money, okay? She had a lot of fame, a lot of success. Doesn't mean that she's good with the money, but she had this infinity. Eight has a, an infinity when you turn it on the side, which means that she would have prosperity and abundance all the rest of her days. Her middle number was a nine, and that's where her life ended um, in her 40s. And that nine means that she was really a good person in, in her if she had been in her normal self, uh, you'd have seen more of that charitable, humane. Every time I ever heard anything from people, um, people I know, everybody loved her, as well as different celebrities who got a chance to meet with her and work with her, always talked about how kind she was and generous and funny and warm, and that people just loved her. But people can love you without you loving yourself. That number nine in the middle tells me that she will be infamous. She will. Um, Whitney, as I looked at her chart, she had freedom. So she could have chosen to not self-medicate. She had the freedom to do that. She also, in her chart, shows that she prefer private, private conflicts. But however, based on who she was, it was hard for that to happen. And that was used to drive her crazy. But there was so much that we didn't know. I didn't know she had sold her Atlanta home. That was the home that she absolutely loved. I didn't know that her and her husband, Bobby Brown, had a custody battle. I didn't know all the, the drama that was going on between them. Um, let, me talk about, uh, let me talk about Whitney a little bit, just so you can understand her. Um, Whitney was a church girl. She was from Newark, New Jersey, which is right there close to New York. And she really, really was a Christian. She really loved God deeply. So much so, she not only went to church and participated in church activities, but she sang in the choir. And um, she had a wonderful voice. And her mother was a very strong uh, Christian woman. And her name was Sissy Houston. And for those who are not familiar with her, she was famous as well. And she um, did many things, but one of them that she did was a sing in a gospel group called the Sweet Inspirations. Uh, Whitney's talent was so good that actually her mom, Sissy, put her in, as like a backup singer with her. And as Whitney's voice was getting better and better and stronger and stronger and, and Sissy would work with her, it just became obvious that she needed to sing. Now, Whitney being the uh, the woman that she was, she didn't want to do gospel music. She really wanted to do pop. And so in about 1985, when she was 19, no, let me just tell you first, she was the first African-American at 17 on set, on the cover of 17 magazine when she was 17. Isn't that something? She had went to New York and did some modeling. Um, but in 85, her she was about 19 years old, and her mother got her connected to um, none other than Clive Davis of Arista Records. 
Clive just absolutely fell in love with her. She had such great energy, okay? And she just had such a, a peaceful spirit and this loving spirit and this, this just glow about her that just made her a magnet for everyone. Um, it was when she was young, though, that it was her brother, allegedly, and this is for entertainment only, let me put that out there, that her brothers, which actually have come on to Oprah and confessed that, that they are the ones that introduced her to cocaine when she was very young. Um, with that Aquarius energy, and I believe she's got, um, trying to see where her Aquarius is. In Saturn, that Aquarius and Saturn that she had would make her go along with people blindly, okay? And so that's what she did with her brother. She saw them using drugs. They introduced her, and then she would use them without thinking what could be the end result of this because she was young. She was young. And um, anyways, as she got with Arista, she became a big sensation, so much so that she's the only artist that's ever had seven consecutive number one singles. So she was winning awards after awards. She also ventured off into movies. Her very first movie was The Bodyguard with Kevin Costner. Excellent movie. The Preacher's Wife, that's my all-time favorite. She made that. It's a Christmas movie. Um, it's off. It's a remake of The Bishop's Wife, if you like old movies like I do. But it's The Preacher's Wife with Denzel Washington. She did Waiting to Exhale. She did a remake of the movie Sparkle. It was a movie in the 70s. And she re remade that with Jordan Sparks from, um, what was she on? America's Got Talent? No. Anyways, she was a, um, a singer. She also did Cinderella with an R&B artist, very famous R&B artist by the name of Brandy, who was in the show Moesha back in the day. She ended up, um, in 1992, she married Bobby Brown. They met because they were at a ward show, and she was sitting behind Bobby, and she was kicking the back of his chair. Well, she saw him perform, and she was attracted to him, and she was kicking the back of his chair, and he turned around to see who was kicking my chair, and it was her, and she was laughing about it. And then he turned back around, and she did it again, and ultimately, they came together. No one was happy about this because Bobby started with the group New Edition and was, was very popular back in the 80s. But he left the group. He wanted to do his own thing. And his own thing was was not really working for him. He made some good songs. He made, uh, made a good album. But um, he had addictions of his own. He was not a drug user, which Whitney's brothers even say that. <clears throat> Bobby was alcoholic, okay, and very young. So... That, that's how they got together. Unfortunately, the marriage didn't last. It seemed to really fall apart after Bobby had a reality show called Being Bobby Brown. And in that show, Whitney finally agreed to be on the show. That's how the show got picked up on television because Whitney would be in it. And boy, was she bashed by the critics because it wasn't the Whitney that we knew back from the 80s uh, or the 90s. She was very... Uh, loud and rude and obnoxious. A lot of the filming, they'd be filming a closed door because Bobby and Whitney were in the room doing things that um, they shouldn't have been done or they couldn't have done on camera. And she just uh, was very, like she, she lost all her dignity. In 2006, uh, her and Bobby decided to divorce. It was a very tumultuous relationship. There was physical violence. There was Bobby going in and out of jail and Whitney coming to pick him up at, at courthouses or outside of jails, looking very disheveled. And it just wasn't her. And in fact, she got to a point where she just stopped making music. No one had even knew where she was. We didn't know at the time that she was in a full on addiction to things. She'd done one interview in the 2000s with Diane Sawyer. I think it was Diane Sawyer. Yeah. And uh, that's where that phrase, crack is whack, came from. Diane asked her, are you doing crack cocaine? People are saying you're doing crack cocaine. And she said, crack is whack, and I don't do that, okay? Only to find out later on in 2000, I think it was about 2009, she did an interview with Oprah where she was sober at that point, 
And then she said when she, she was doing that Diane Sawyer interview, she had just finished smoking crack and she was high at that time. Um, she had told Oprah about her many attempts to go into rehab, but they have failed even to the point where her family, her mom, Sissy, and the rest of the family uh, staged an intervention to get her some rehab help. And she just wouldn't do it. It just would not take for her. Time went on and then she kind of got quiet again and only to find out that she was back in her addiction again. She cleaned up a little bit and she got back with Clive Davis because at this point she was out of money and she needed to pay for this mansion and whatever else she got with Clive Davis. And because she follows people blindly, Clive talked her and convinced her into doing a tour, a world tour. And this was after she'd made a couple of albums that weren't that great. They didn't sell like the old days. Um, but she went on this world tour and she bombed. And this was really hard for this lady, okay? It was a failure. There were people, and you can find it on YouTube if you look it up. Um, they had one show and I watched it and people were so disappointed. They said her voice was gone. Her behavior was rude. They wanted their money back. They were literally leaving out of the theater and going to the box office to get their money back. And she was canceling shows. And um, so finally she ends up with all the backlash of how terrible it was and her voice was gone. She ends up canceling the entire tour. So now that takes us to um, the day. Uh, well, two days before the day, I should say, it was February 9, 2012. And she was in uh, Beverly Hills at this time because it was Grammy time and Clive Davis was going to have a pre-Grammy party and Whitney was going to sing at that pre-Grammy party. So she came to see Clive and he was actually in rehearsal with Brandy from the Moesha show and who did Cinderella with Whitney and another R&B singer, Monica. And she came in and they talked about she was so disheveled and so out of it. And I actually saw that clip where they, they're talking to like um, uh, E! News and she just walks right in like the cameras are not rolling. She walks over to Brandy and whispers in her ear, ear and gives Brandy a note. Um, the thing was Brandy has a brother, allegedly. No, she doesn't allegedly have a brother. She does have a brother, but allegedly on the note was instructions for her younger brother to go out and found her some drugs. And um, she stayed for just a brief minute on this, this crossing through in the middle of this interview, and she left. Two days later, um, she was at another event. Now this is, uh, or I should say that same day. I'm sorry, my dates are mixed up. But on that same day, on February 9th, she went that evening to another club and at this particular club she did her actually last performance and she sang with a young lady by the name of kelly price and she did the song jesus loves me and that just is so profound to me because it's almost as if she knew her time had come to an end okay jesus loves me and um it ended up that in that club she actually got in a little scuffle with some other lady who was uh, talking badly about her and her voice and all of that and they had some some words I don't know if there was some pushing or shoving I'm not going to say that but I know that I know uh, Whitney walked out with like blood running down her legs and she went home now it was two days later and Whitney had gotten up this in the morning and I know that she had had at least one beer and uh, she was there with uh, friends in her I don't I want to say her friend or her assistant and that she was not the assistant was not supposed to leave Whitney at home alone well what ended up happening was she did leave because Whitney needed this dress for that night's performance the assistant said please be careful I will be right back and at that time Whitney lost her life so some things I want to share with you about that. Um, I had written down some 
some surprise things. Uh, well, the first thing was that she was found face down in her tub filled with water. Now, some say she was sitting up, but there's a very famous forensic psychologist, and his name is Cyril Wecht, and you probably have heard of him. If not, Google is your friend. And he said he totally disagreed with that. He said that she was so intoxicated that uh, she fell into the tub. By the time she was going into the tub, she was unconscious, and she was either dying or dead. He said that she wouldn't have been sitting in the tub at all because the water temperature was 93.5 degrees and it would have been too hot for her to sit in the tub. Now, these are some things supposed to be, you know, supposedly surprise things that were found. Um, first of all, in the bathroom, there was a small spoon with a piece of paper rolled up that she would have used to inhale that cocaine. The cocaine would have been in the spoon and she would have sniffed it up in her nose. Um, also, there were uh, traces of cocaine and prescription drugs were in her system. It also showed that she had smoked weed like two weeks before, even though weed is legal in California. Um, it was said that by the toxicologist that she was acutely intoxicated with cocaine and that she was a repeated user of cocaine. It wasn't a one-time incident, although that was like the worst known kept secret ever. There was also 12 different prescriptions in her system at the time of the autopsy, including uh, Xanax was still in the stomach, as well as Fexoril, Flexoril, and that is a muscle relaxer. So if you're looking at, she's got Xanax that calms you down, slows you, your system down. The muscle relaxer, relaxer is doing the same thing. The alcohol is a depressant plus the cocaine and whatever else the 12 medications are. She had a Molotov cocktail inside of herself. In addition, there were open bottles of champagne and there was one beer on the table, which I knew that she had had that and another one by her stand, bed stand. Along on the bed stand with the beer were a number of loose tablets. I don't know what they were. Along with multiple cigarette butts because she had the smoking habit that she could not break. So... As I look at this, I just want to take a look at her chart to see what in her would have caused this to happen. Okay, so I want to look at Whitney's birthday a little bit and just see what would make her self-medicate because that's what you're doing when you are, you know, taking a lot of alcohol or food or drugs or prescription medication, you're overdoing it. Just a side note, there's not going to be as many pictures as before because we got dinged for all those pictures on a couple of videos. So rather than do that, we're going to keep the pictures uh, way less. So um, for Whitney, her birthday is August 9th, 1963. And it was 2012 when she passed away. But for her, because her, she died February 11th, she was not in a 2012 year. She was still in a 2011 year. And so for her, that was a number three year. That's her personal year for 2011 and what she was still in when she died in February. Um, that's a number three year. Number three years, I say this all the time. It's about having a good time, being super creative, wanting to be out there, being very feminine, very uh, a lot of feminine energy. Even though you might be all male and very masculine, there is a more sensitive side to you. Um, bubbly, like to socialize, want to be around people, but ill-dignified or in the reverse, it finds you to be blaming others, angry at others, feeling like you're a victim of situations and circumstances. Her life path was a number nine, and that tells me that a number, if you have a number nine lifetime, a life uh, number, life path number, that says you're going to always be remembered. And for her, she will be. She'll always be remembered, besides being a very humane person and a humanitarian person. And the one thing you always heard about Whitney, anybody who will have ever talked about her, always talks about how kind she was and generous and funny and, and all of that. And that was her. Um, Whitney had freedom in her chart. So this didn't have to happen. She chose this. And once she got into this addictiveness, she couldn't stop. I think it started as 
just something to calm her down. She liked it and it was with her brothers. And I think that she very much trusted them. And she was, she has the energy of someone that will follow blindly. Okay. She is, her Saturn is in Aquarius. And so she likes groups and things, but she will go along without really asking or questioning or anything else. And I think she saw her brother or brothers doing that and she would go along with it because they were okay. So she was okay. But then she got a lot of money. And so she could afford to indulge more and more and more. Um, another thing about her chart is she's very, she was very private. So you think that it's public. I think the relationship with Bobby brought things to the public, but what she was doing personally was private, whether it was her divorce or her money situation, um, when she was going to be traveling or if she wanted to, or where was she? She was missing for a long time, many years. Um, all of that was private. Even her death was private. When she died, she died alone. She had someone there, I think her assistant or her friend, and she needed to get a dress and the friend went to go get the dress because they didn't want ever leave Whitney alone. And so the friend said, well, let me run and get this dress and I'll be right back. And Whitney encouraged her to go. And by the time she came back, there was water on the floor, bath water on the floor, and Whitney was gone already. Whitney had a rising sign of Libra, and that's why she always seemed so friendly and amiable um, and very charming, okay? Uh, not especially decisive and also naive, very naive, I think. And especially as it came to touring again in 2010, she wasn't ready, and I think that she believed Clive when he said, you'll be fine, and it'll work out, because it didn't work out. Her son is an Aquarius, so that is a beautiful place to be as creative as she was, as independent, as stubborn. That's why she said no, no, no to the rehab or the family intervention or why the, the rehabs didn't work. She didn't want to go along with that. She was a big thinker. She loved to be out and travel and learn new things and explore new avenues. And she could have had this much better life. It was already a big life. It was already filled with drama, but she could have had it without the drama. Her moon is in Virgo, which is surprising because that's how you feel. And the Virgos, I know, tend to be a little more on the protective side. Maybe that speaks to her private side of not revealing everything. Um, her Mercury and Venus were in Capricorn. So with her Mercury and Capricorn, why did she go out and travel even? Why did she tour? Why would she go along Clive? Because of the money. Money was super important to her, as it is to everybody, but even more so. Everything was about money. She never lost out on an opportunity to tour. She was like a touring artist. And um, sometimes she would do studio albums. In fact, before she d died, she did a couple, and they didn't, they didn't do that well. You know, I think just her voice was gone and probably some of the production, the pr production people weren't there. She used to produce with Clive Davis and for some he wasn't even there to help her produce. Not that he wasn't interested, it just was sort of a break. Her Venus in Capricorn made her um, real distrustful of other people. And then that goes along with being Whitney Houston. Who do you trust, right? She liked older people, though. She really had a lot of love and respect for older people and their wisdom and their seriousness. She had uh, uh, Mars and Leo, and I can see it. That would made her super strong, super proud, bold, daring. She could get out there, but she could be very proud or arrogant or even dismissive. And now if she's got um, her Mars in Leo, and when she went overseas touring and people bashed her so bad, that would have made her so angry. She would have shut down the... Um, the concerts, which she did, because she wouldn't have wanted to be embarrassed. They hate to be embarrassed if you have a Mars in Leo there. Um, it would also make her want to self-medicate, to heal like salve to those wounds. Um, her Jupiter is in Pisces. So that made that is what made her a very spiritual person. She was very much a Christian person. She is the type of person that could be talking about God on one hand and using cocaine or smoking marijuana or popping pills at the same time. Okay, she was very much so. That Jupiter in Pisces 
is, I don't know, that's kind of a tough place for because it makes Pisces kind of lost, I think. It made her feel lost. First, I'm getting bashed. I've got just gotten a divorce. Uh, she had to sell her mansion, and she got $1.1 million for him, and that had been her beloved home forever. And so all these things were coming up and changing, and she didn't know she was in a number nine year. She didn't know she had to let that go and start all over again. She just did not know. And so for her, her death was purely accidental. She hadn't gotten sick of living. She hadn't gotten that because she liked the bubbly side. But what she liked was uh, the praise. That was addiction, the fame, people loving her voice. Um, she had kind of stepped out of her godliness, her Christianness, and which was really her mission in life in order to get that money or get that high. And I think that she completely lost herself in all of it. And then with feeling so embarrassed and so ashamed, um, so much so that she would be so arrogant with people, it got to the end that she was so hard to work with. She would be very arrogant, domineering, demanding, um, and that wasn't really who she was. So she would take this medication because it was a habit, because she was addicted to it, and she had no idea that that was going to happen. But you're in a uh, number nine life path. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, rooms that were 11. The room number was number 11. Her death was number 11, and she walked right through the gateway. And now let's take a look at Bobby Christina because Bobby Christina was there when Whitney passed. She wasn't in the room, but she was at the hotel and she was just beside herself. Her mother meant everything to her, everything. So much so, her mother even introduced her to using drugs. And this is a way that they bonded. Now, Bobby Christina was the only child of Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston, and she was born March 4th, 1993. Um, she was very close to her mother. Her mother meant everything to this little girl. And you imagine that your daughter loves you so dearly because she couldn't have a lot of playmates and friends, even though she did have step siblings and and some family, but you're just with your mother, just with your mother, traveling with your mother, wanting to make your mother proud. <clears throat> Everybody focusing on your mother. That alone is hard enough for a child. Um, Bobby had did some reality TV. She was on Being with Bobby Brown, and she would be right there when Bobby and Whitney would go at it and have these all-out fights or lock themselves in the room to do whatever they were going to do. Um, so it was very hard for her. And like I said, on the day that her mother died in 2012, she was right there and she just literally collapsed and they had to get her to the hospital. It was, it was the end of the world for her, okay? Um, so it was three years after the death of her mother and many things had happened with her. And there had been a young man by the name of Nick Gordon, um, may he rest in peace, uh, that was her god brother, if you want to say. He was a friend of Bobby Christina's. And then he had some problems with his parents. And then Whitney allowed him to come and stay with her and Bobby Christina. Because that way, you know, it's like you could have your child preoccupied, I, which she's got a friend. Now I don't have to be the all the time playmate because I've got an addiction that I've got to take care of is really what was happening. And so they had gotten close and, and allegedly Whitney had even let them experiment with cocaine, with alcohol. So at a point, there was even a point where, where um, I believe it was Bobby, Christina, Whitney and even Nor Nick had gone into rehab together. It had gotten that bad. Now, three years after Whitney's passing, uh, on January 31st, 2015, Bobby Christina, after a night of partying, she had been drinking to excess. She had been taking drugs as well. And she was found unresponsive in the bathtub. 
um, Nick, her boyfriend, and another friend of theirs, because they all came in drunk. They had been fighting and arguing, so Nick and Bobby Christina had gone to separate rooms, and that's why he wasn't there when she was in the bathroom. She was by herself, and it ended up that they started CPR, and they took her to the hospital, and they found that she was uh, very diminished in her brain. It was almost like if she had been brain dead, but not quite. It was just very diminished. Um, and they found her completely unresponsive. Um, okay, so once they came, once she got to the hospital and they, they looked at her, they found that um, she had been completely drug intoxicated. She had been drinking and it was as if she had drowned the same way her mother did in the tub. Uh, she had stayed in a coma for six months, actually. All the while, she had been moved to different uh, adult rehabilitation centers because she had come out of the coma for a while. Um, but then they had to put her back in a, a coma, which they put her in a coma the first time, I should have said that, but they put her back in a coma. That way it could give you know, her time, her brain time to get back well. And when they took her out again, she was having seizures, so they had to put her back in there. And Bobby had taken her to a, a hospital in Chicago. She had been in several Atlanta hospitals and rehabilitation centers. And at the end, her brain uh, facility was so damaged that they had decided to pull the plug on her. And she actually died on July 26, 2015. I think she actually, and this is just alleged, it's just my opinion, I am not a doctor, that she probably died before that because her brain um, functioning was so very low and they were really trying to hold on to her because they had just lost Whitney three years prior. As a side note, uh, like I said, she was with a young man named Nick Gordon and Nick ended up going on, first he was accused of her death and they actually won $36 million lawsuit. The family sued him not because he drowned her, but because he and her, he allowed her to get so uh, intoxicated to the point where she she couldn't handle it. So he, they actually won that suit against him. He didn't have $36 million, but he had gotten so um, sick himself with substance abuse. He put himself in rehab. Um, this was rehab after Dr. Phil. If you saw him on Dr. Phil, he was still very much a, an addict. And then after Dr. Phil, he went on and ultimately um, the death of Bobby Christina, the death of Whitney Houston, it really took him out and he ended up passing away himself from a drug overdose. So that's just a side note on what happened to Nick Gordon. But when I look at Bobby Christina, it really tells me, okay, I know what happened here. Bobby Christina was, uh, birthday is March 4th, 1993, and she was born in Livingston, New Jersey at 1.38 a.m. Um, she had a life path too, so that's what you're striving for. And what she was striving for was peace, balance, unity, um, relations, not relationships like someone, but relations, everyone getting along and being able to communicate in a positive manner. And um, she was striving for that. Your life path is what you're trying to create in this life. And she wanted that kind of a life, but it evaded her. She was playing rep referee with her parents. She was trying to raise herself a lot of times when Bobby and uh, Whitney were were not available because of their own personal addictions. Um, she also, in that particular year of 2015, uh, it was a number six year for her. So she was carrying a lot of burdens. And that's because she had inherited money from her mother, okay? And so her, because Whitney had been the breadwinner for the family, and Whitney was having her siblings and in-laws work for her and giving them tasks. So she kept them paid and they were looking for Bobby Christina to do the same thing. They had their hands out for that. Um, Bobby was, Bobby Christina was, was so watery. She had a rise against Scorpio. So even though she did the reality show, it wasn't very much of it. And she didn't reveal very much. I guess reality shows you really clown and act a fool and all your business is out in the street. And she was much too 
much of a private person for that. Okay. She didn't, she did, she wanted to have a career. She wanted to be big like her mother. She wanted to be this great, profound singer, but sometimes somebody gets the talent or your parent gets the talent in something, but that's not your talent. And she couldn't understand that because she didn't have that strong upbringing, that strong mothering to say, Hey, your, your singing's okay, but you're better at this. She didn't have that. Um, her son is in Pisces. So this was a lost fish and her moon was in cancer. So her family, her mother meant everything to her and she loved her father too, but she was loyal to her mother and didn't really deal with her father as much as she should have. Her Mercury is in Pisces. I mean, just look at this. Her Venus is in Aries. So she distrusted a lot of people and she, she was argumentative and she would fight all the time. Um, and that, that Scorpio rising also made her very distrustful. That dark negative side of that Pisces energy is like a fish that swimming upstream all the time and they go to the darker side. And that is why she continued to self-medicate the loss of her mother. She was like lost in the ocean. Like a, if you put a little goldfish in the Pacific ocean or Atlantic ocean or whatever, they're lost and she was lost and she could not see her way back. And she did not see that there was light at the end of the tunnel. She didn't see anything that was available for her. So was this an accident for her? No, this was a suicide. This was, she, this is something that yes, she came back into that house intoxicated, but she upped it. And for her to be in the same position in the bathtub as her mother, that was a suicide. That is that dark side of Pisces that has you do very strange things, very peculiar, very dark, almost wicked in a way. Um, not to say that she is wicked, but just to say that it gets really dark and really crazy. And she really was, and it was by no fault of her own, but this was destined to happen for her. <laughs> she had destiny in her side. And so with all this water and all this emotions and emotions gone wrong, her Mars was in cancer. So something was going to die. Okay. And it was her, it was her. So what I want to say in this is Whitney accidentally died. Whitney was an addict. It is so sad. It's sad for me to even have to say that out loud. I never thought I'd be talking about her like that, but she was an addict, plain and simple. Bobby Christina was turned on or turned out by her mom and she had destiny on her side. So it was only going to go this way for her. And this is what she chose in life. And it was going this way. Bobby Christina was suicide. It was suicide. It wasn't an accident. There was nobody in the room. She was alone. She was intoxicated. When you get intoxicated, you start thinking really crazy with all that water in her and then Mars in that cancer, all that Pisces. Yeah, she felt alone, not just in the room, but alone, period. She had a fight with her boyfriend. Her dad and her weren't speaking. Her mother had passed away. She didn't really deal too much with the other side of the family. She wanted to be an adult. She wanted to be grown. And that's what happened. So guys, it was a very sad tale. I hope you watch it. Please subscribe. Thumbs up. Thumbs me up, please. And make sure that you share. And thank you so much. And have a great day.